So, Mike, my friend Monica thought it would be funny to ask you, when you mm. were up there, did you find out if the Earth was flat or round? <laughs> uh, yeah, that's one of the first things I verified, and you can tell, Monica, that it actually is round. Okay. It certainly is. And you can see that in a movie, too. You can see the curvature <laughs> there, so she can witness herself. Okay, I will tell her. Yeah. Now, when you saw the film for the first time, mm -hmm. did it take you back to that place? Oh, yeah, was it sure it did. a different experience? No, it sure did. Uh, in, in fact, my, when I saw the film a few days ago for the first time, my wife was sitting next to me in the theater, which was kind of cool, so... I could share it with her, and uh, she thought that uh, her seat was shaking from the IMAX sound, <laughs> but it was actually me from, you know, shaking like, uh, just getting emotional watching it. Oh, wow. Uh, from, from seeing the launch sequence again. And it really takes it back. Movie? What's that? No, yeah. I stopped shaking after the launch. You can't shake the whole space flag in the okay. whole movie. But I really was just pumped up watching that, uh, watching the launch scene, and uh, it helps her relive it. And, and also the scenes, uh, the views of the Earth, and, and the way it, on the, in that format, seeing it that big, uh, brings it back very clearly. So it's, it's wonderful. I, I feel like I can, I don't have to go back to space to relive it, I can go to the theater. But are you ready to go back now? Yeah, I'll go to the, <laughs> either place, the theater or space. I, you know, I, both places are good places to go. Now, Tony, I have a question for you. I, Leonardo DiCaprio is a big environmentalist. Mm -hmm. How did you get him involved in this film? Well, actually, it was my boss uh, who, uh, in talking to Warner Brothers, and Leonardo was doing a film for Warner Brothers, and they got talking about it, and um, uh, also our, our chairman of IMAX okay. met Leonardo in Japan oh, over nice. dinner, and, and they got talking about the film, and so it all coalesced over these few meetings, and of course, I was thrilled to, to have Leonardo as our narrator, right. and it was wonderful to work with him. Um, he's, as you know, a very committed environmentalist, right. um, but he had seen all of our space films as a child. Mm -hmm. He grew up in East L.A. and had been going to the Science Center, um, the Science Museum, uh, as a little kid. And, oh. and so he was familiar with all of our films, and so he, he brought that enthusiasm with him and worked very, very hard and contributed a lot to the film, actually. He had some very good suggestions. Such um, as? Uh, well, those, the, the you know, uh, focusing a little bit on our planet. Um, I mean, the shots were already in there, but... Right. Um, you know, we worked up some lines together on the spot, so it was a, it was a real collaboration. Now, you also did Space Station 3D. Yes. How is that film technically different from this one? Uh, you know, that was done over multiple flights, okay. of course, and we were recording with two IMAX cameras, one in the cargo bay, which got all the construction covered, okay. and then we had a camera that lived on the space station for a year. We flew the camera up and left it there, but <clears throat> because our film gets radiated, if it is left on orbit for more than a certain amount of time, it gets fogged by cosmic radiation. So it was a terribly difficult thing for those crews to get that film exposed because we had to fly film up on each shuttle mission, throw it across the hatch to station, they had to blast it off shooting it, and then they had to throw it back across the hatch to bring it back to Earth. And they were really busy doing things like installing uh, and furnishing the space station. So the, the, the fact that that got filmed was a miracle. Okay, now Mike, you're, when you're out there, you're over so many different time zones and so many different yeah. continents, how do you decide when to sleep? <laughs> yeah, you, know, you, you go coast to coast in 11 minutes okay. across the United States, yeah. Uh, so it, yeah, it, what we do is we go by something called mission elapsed time, and they give us these, these watches to, that can help us with that. We can actually set it on mission elapsed time. Uh, when you launch, it's time zero. And... Uh, a few hours, so everything's based on your launch, and you can only launch at certain times in the day based on what the telescope is. Okay. So depending, your launch, your launch time changes based on the day of the year that you're going to launch. So they figure out, oh, we're going to launch this day, where's the telescope going to be, what time do we need to launch the, the, the shuttle, and then they determine that they want us to go to orbit, uh, have a few hours of work, and then go to bed. So based on all of that stuff, they, and we want to get eight hours of sleep, right. they figure out, okay, we need to shift these guys their okay. sleep schedule. So we ended up uh, East Coast time waking up kind of early in the morning and uh, going to bed not too late at, at night by the end of the, of the day. And they shifted us on Earth to get used to that schedule. And then that kind of fell into the mission elapsed time. So you look at mission elapsed time, hey, we've okay. got 15 minutes. Because 
you're just whipping around. You can't go to bed at night because you only got 40 minutes. You have to wake up again. You'd go crazy up and down. So now I know you, you have a Twitter time. account. Yes. Can you give us a URL so everyone yeah, else can yeah, follow it's, you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, it's uh, oh, sorry, you with my my ID. Yeah. Is Astro underscore Mike. Perfect. And and uh, I started twittering in my training, and I also sent some from from space, and I'm still doing it. I'll Perfect. probably twitter about this.